Sundowner, the entrepreneurship Sundowner uh, that we hold every month, uh, third Wednesday of the, of the month. Um, today, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to today. Um, how to generate innovative ideas. Okay, and I think most of you here, that's what you're here for, right? I hope. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting, it's going to be interactive. Uh, we're going to get you to do some thinking and creativity. Um, so let me introduce our doctor, Dr. Detlev Heiss. Wow, perfect. <laughs> um, or Dr. D. Okay, Dr. D. Can I call you Dr. D? Yeah, Dr. D. Okay. Yeah. Um, the founder and chief idea ideator of Thinkergy, Thinkergy Limited. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's an innovation company in Asia. Okay. Um, so. Without further ado, maybe I'll, I'll turn the, the floor to Dr. D. Yeah. Please give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Sarita. Good evening to all of you, and uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, thanks also for being here in time. Uh, today, the weather is very bad, uh, so maybe some more people are dropping in as we, we speak, but I think it's good that we start with our uh, mini workshop. Uh, and uh, I was told I have roughly one hour, maybe a little bit more, to talk with you about the topic, how to generate innovative ideas. It's a really interesting topic, and uh, some of uh, the Sassin Entrepreneurship Center invited me, so I also try to, to gear the discussion towards uh, entrepreneurship, because that's probably also what many of you are interested in. So, before I start, who am I? My name is uh, Dr. Detlef. That's a German name, so I'm a German by nationality, but I've lived uh, since 16 years in, in Asia in various countries, uh, uh, in Thailand since uh, 11 years, and uh, uh, somehow since my first name and also my family name is a bit uh, uh, difficult to pronounce, so I just short this up to D or F to D, yeah, so that's my, my nickname. And I'm the founder of uh, ThinkerG, ThinkerG is an innovation company, and uh, we really want to exclusively focus on innovation. Innovation, uh, so we do also different kind of things, uh, trainings and so on, but we are not a training company. We don't do uh, somehow all kind of trainings. We're really focused on innovation yeah, because we believe that's something that we can make the, the biggest difference. And we are on a mission to create more innovators here in Asia. Why? Because uh, we believe that uh, Asia in particular needs to somehow lead a new innovation wave. Yeah? Somehow we have a lot of problems with uh, the challenges as humanity. There are uh, soon uh, uh, 9 billion people living on this uh, planet, yeah? and many of them are living in Asia. So Asia really needs to lead this, uh, also the solution side on how to basically go forward. Yeah? And that's where we want to contribute. So we want to empower people like you yeah? to basically realize your creative and innovative potential. So far, we uh, mostly work with uh, multinational companies, uh, both uh, on a subsidiary level, on a regional level, and also uh, to a certain extent uh, on uh, a corporate level in uh, the headquarters, for example, with BMW in Germany. And uh, going forward, uh, we will also focus more or have more solutions for entrepreneurs and for, for smaller businesses, but that's something where we uh, basically need to wait until some other products are out. Anybody who likes to learn a little bit more about ThinkerG, please uh, visit our website, www.thinkerg.com, and uh, you'll find out a little bit more about us and also what we have to offer, what we can bring to the table, how we may support you. Now with this uh, starting introductory words, I would like to give you a brief overview about what I want to talk with you about today. Our topic again, how to generate ideas. And what I first want to do is briefly talk about ideas and also in this connection talk about the concepts of creativity and innovation. What's that? How also does this connect? How do these concepts uh, relate to each other? Then I want to introduce you to a structured way to go about an innovation project. And this is an innovation method that I've invented for my company, ThinkerG, called XID. And uh, basically also then putting into context, when we talk about ideation, that's just one thing that we need to do, among other things. Yeah? And with an XID, we basically try to make this uh, systematic, try to make this orderly, in order to 
some of, take some of the messiness out of innovation and creativity. Then we actually start working on some uh, kind of practice case, yeah, just for, for simulating a little bit, and start talking about uh, the first state of XRD, which is something called uh, exploration that we need to do in order to get ready, that we actually then later on can do uh, ideation. Then we do some ideation exercise. Yeah? We will split you up maybe into three groups. Hope that maybe some more people are coming, but otherwise we'll just work with uh, what we have there. And that's then also something where you get a feeling about different styles, how you could do ideation. And then at the end, I'll basically show you what happens after the ideation. Because ideation is just one part, yeah? and then you, there are other things that you need to do. Yeah? And that also, again, puts everything into perspective. Last but not least, we have a, a, a short Q&A. Some of you might have some problem, uh, problems, some questions. And uh, of course, uh, whatever questions uh, you have, here, please uh, keep them for the end of my talk, yeah? and then we can go through all of your questions. Good. Let's get started by taking a look at the concepts of creativity and innovation, and answer the questions, what are these concepts actually all about? And how do they connect? How do they relate to each other? And if you look into the literature, of course, there are hundreds of definitions about these concepts. All of them have their point. Yeah? And somehow, when I started a couple of years ago, uh, I really started with the definition of a long-term innovation leader, 3M, uh, from the US. They define innovation as new ideas plus action or implementation which results in, a gain, in an improvement, a gain, or a profit. Uh, so new ideas plus action resulting in some kind of improvement, gain, or profit. Now, if you like, we could also write this down in a slightly different way. We can say create uh, new ideas, meaningful, new, and new, uh, original ideas is nothing else than the result of creativity. Plus, action equals innovation. And that's really a very simple equation that uh, we also use uh, when we work with clients to, to help them explain some fundamental concepts. For example, many big companies, they have realized we are in the innovation economy, and now it's all about innovation. Yeah? So they say, we need to get innovative. Let's hire an innovation manager and charge her with building the innovation management system, and then we, get, then we have innovations. They do this, they find this person, and one year uh, passes, and they have a performance review meeting on the, the CEO, maybe asks, so how many innovation did we get? And the answer is, nothing or not much, because what they don't realize is that innovation always begins with ideas. With ideas that come out of individual heads. So if you want to become more innovative as an organization, having an innovation manager and an innovation management system is good, you should have it. At the same time, it's not enough. It's, it's also not where it starts. It starts with ideas. Yeah? So you should somehow teach your employees on how to get more creative. You also should have a culture that encourages them and makes them feel comfortable to actually suggest ideas and then maybe also to act upon ideas. Also, Having ideas alone is not good enough. There are many people who are, have lots of ideas, who are highly creative, and who never do anything about those ideas, and we call these people dreamers. So what is the difference between a dreamer and an innovator? The answer is taking action. We must take action. Yeah? And that's also when we do events with, with Synergy, both trainings or real projects, we are really action-oriented, because without action, nothing happens. Yeah? So action is really important. Now what is also what I want to emphasize, because that's something which we need later on, is again looking at dimensions of creativity. And uh, there are three criteria that we can use and that we need to check also in order to decide whether an idea is really creative. Number one, the idea needs to be new, it needs to be fresh, unprecedented. Number two, it needs to be unique. Uh, so it should be something which is really an original idea, not another Me Too idea that I copied from somebody else. And last but not least, the idea needs to be meaningful, uh, needs to be valuable, needs to have utility, needs to be worthwhile, significant, yeah, relevant. And these are things that we need to, to check upon. And if these 
three criteria are met, then we have really uh, a creative ideas, so then we can take action upon the idea and we will end up with an innovation deliverable. So that's basically what I just wanted to, to uh, emphasize at the beginning because we also need to have this uh, idea about what is really creative later on when we work on our case. Now with Thinkergy, we try to make innovation systematic and, and uh, for that reason, I've uh, created some innovation methods that cater to different levels uh, that people have. Yeah? Process, and uh, apologies, uh, somewhat, uh, one S is missing, it uh, somehow reformatted. Process is the starting point. Yeah? And basically, uh, every company can learn how to think more systematically uh, and how to, how to use thinking tools. And we have created an uh, innovation method that is called X idea to do the job. And that's something also where I want to focus our discussion tonight on this method. We also have some um, methods that work more on the cultural side and on the people side of innovation. Yeah? TIPS is a method that helps you to understand uh, who you are and who every other people in your team are. So it's basically uh, an innovation specific uh, personality profiling system, and that's really also good to ensure that you use people according to their natural strengths and to their talents. Core cool. is a method uh, all about uh, innovation culture transformation, so that's something which a, a, a large corporation would use who wants to transform their culture and become more innovation friendly. Uh, to be honest, uh, we have pitched this several times here to, to companies in Asia, and we haven't sold this, uh, this method yet because at a certain point of time, senior management realized, wow, if we do this, we really need to change. Yeah? They really want us to change. Yeah? And of course, they also realize that they need to start with this change. Yeah? And that's something which uh, we haven't done so. Last but not least, uh, creative leadership is a starting point to, to then also some of work first with the, with the senior executives that we have a method called genius journey to do this job. But what I want to do is today talk with you about an innovation process that we can do to get more innovative ideas, which is the topic of our talk. And that's a method called XRD. And I, I have a video which explains a little bit about XRD, and then I'll give you some additional information about this. So let's take a look at the video. The famous American psychologist Abraham Maslow noted that if the only tool you have is a hammer, you tend to see every problem as a nail. When generating ideas for a problem or an innovation challenge, most people only do brainstorm. But most brainstormers don't know how to do it correctly, and few are aware how ineffective it is for producing lots of ideas. In short, brainstorming is no better than a hammer, and more sophisticated tools are needed. So, why not try some of those other thinking tools found on the internet or collected in books or dropped on you in vanilla creativity courses. While these may expand your options, you still need to know how to correctly use them, when exactly to apply them, and for what types of outputs. Even if you are lucky to find tools where all these aspects are accounted for, they are still highly prone to failure, because they usually don't consider cultural and people issues. Intercultural arguments may be common in certain groups, while in others people won't suggest bold ideas for risk of losing faith. Clearly, innovation can be a messy process, but why make it even messier by using too few disorderly tools in other ways? To resolve these issues, we created Xidea, Synergy's proprietary innovation method and toolbox. Xidea cuts through the messiness, making it systematically easy to guide people through innovation projects and reliably reduce value of the results. The XID innovation method consists of five main process stages. Export, ideation, development, evaluation, and action. In each stage, XID invites you to adopt an ideal mindset for that part of the process. In each stage, you take three steps while avoiding common thinking traps that wait for you on your innovation journey. Xidea also recommends you what kinds of outputs to produce along with quantities to aim for. Supporting the Xidea Innovation Method is the mighty, ever-growing Xidea Innovation Toolbox. 
each of our current 150 thinking tools fits a particular step within each stage of the process, making it impossible for you to get lost in your innovation journey. Plus, we add at least 11 new tools every year to cater to emerging trends and new client requirements. XID is designed to work for all leading innovation needs, from process and product to service innovation, from brand and image to customer experience design, from business model and strategy to social innovation. That's why we call it the know-how of one. XID is created by Synergy. Our mission is to create innovators, and XID is our core innovation method that empowers us to do so. Synergy, know-how to one. So this video tells you a little bit about what XID is all about. Again, it's an uh, innovation method that comprises out of five stages. We have first an exploration stage where we want to understand what our case is all about. We introduce an innovation case. Then we have an ideation stage where we generate lots of ideas. And the focus is here on idea quantity. We can do this because we have a second creative stage called development. And that's something which is really crucial. Many innovation methods are not working because they have only one creative stage. And in the development stage, we spend time to turn idea quantity into quality. And so we really create meaningful, realistic idea concepts for our case. Then we have another stage, the evaluation stage. And in the evaluation stage, we then try to understand the pros and cons of our idea concepts in order to identify which ones really deserve our time, money, and effort later on to turn them into a tangible innovation deliverable. And that's something which we then do in the final stage, action, where we then really pitch the idea, secure funding, and then start an uh, idea activation project. So again, why is it useful to use such a method? We do different things at different points in time. We also produce different outputs at different points in time. Yeah. And ultimately, uh, we yeah, also use different thinking tools at different points in time. Yeah. So you see an overview. Exadia has a, a thinking toolbox where basically we have linked every yeah, uh, all these, these tools in this uh, toolbox to a default position within this overall process. Yeah. And then depending on what project you're working on, you pull different tools to help you do the job. And uh, yeah, this one we skip. So just showing you some uh, some projects that we did. Uh, for example, we uh, we work with uh, BMW and, and Munich on uh, car concept ideas for uh, uh, Asia because they are now Asia is becoming their, their their biggest and most important market. Nestle is uh, uh, here in Thailand. We we did uh, a, a really big project with uh, eleven categories uh, over. All in all, uh, eight uh, workshop days, yeah, where we try to uh, help them uh, or extend their products into a new consumer segment that they haven't reached so far, and they need to do to break into the segment to achieve their growth target. So that was for them a really, really big project. How did it go? How did it go? How did it go? With the reaching out to the was it a success? Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, what we did is basically we split this up over five months, yeah, and we had uh, first the kickoff workshop doing exploration, then we had uh, over th four months uh, they were going out to the field and every six weeks they need to come back and report what they found out and then basically we, we guided this, this exploration. And then at the end we had a, a, a four-day ideation, development and evaluation workshop where we basically, each category was working on a different challenge on each day and so we, uh, in the last day was done the, the, the idea pitches yeah? and that's something were for us it, it meant that we had actually 33 different projects <laughs> to deal with. It was a really, really huge uh, uh, project, yeah? and that uh, someone nested and also used these things to, to, to implement them in each of their categories. Do you, do you have any figures on what it meant for the, for the business commercially? Yeah, we, we, have, we don't have the, the numbers, but that's something uh, they basically uh, committed substantial resources to this to, to achieve this. and. Uh, uh, we were told later uh, on that uh, they had something like 40 ideas that they that they plan to to, uh, to activate. So we, we don't know the the the, the how that yeah, and that's something uh, which which we would love to know, but I, I can't give you the the hard number.
Also, uh, uh, you with Deutsche Bank uh, uh, in my former life, uh, uh, and also have my colleagues here to, to pitch a strategic business expansion uh, to the board uh, of uh, managing directors in Germany and so on. So, lip care innovation project with Biosoft, production process improvement, and so on. And I don't want to go into the details, I just show you this that XID uh, uh, is really flexible, it's designed to work with all kinds of uh, industries, it's designed to work with all modern innovation types. And uh, that's something uh, where uh, we, we really then uh, somehow need to have the flexibility to be able to pull different tools for different projects. Good. Also, I am uh, very happy that uh, at the end of last year, uh, we won our first award for this, uh, sponsored by Nokia. Uh, I won a, 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 an award for the uh, implications of, of Xavier for, for business practitioners. And uh, so far now, we, we also have uh, and call this uh, an award-winning method since it was uh, something which uh, was, was given to us at the uh, biggest uh, international innovation conference which took place at that time in Singapore. Good. Now, talking about X-Idea, and in order to get started with you doing a little bit of work and to also make this a little bit more practical, I want to introduce an innovation case to you that we just use as, as a simulation yeah, to, 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 to play a little bit about and then also in particular to do some ideation exercises. And in order to, to start talking about this case, uh, I just want to share with you what is the business environment that we are living at at the moment and also how is it going to, to, uh, uh, to be in the next 20 years. You see here a famous futurist named James Canton. And James Canton wrote a book, uh, The Extreme Future, The Top Trends That Will Reshape the World in the Next 20 Years. And he says, business in the next 20 years essentially will accelerate all of the time. Everything will get faster and faster, so there's an increasing speed. We will see exponential changes, mainly technology driven, by uh, uh, an extension of, uh, of Moore's law that the microchips uh, will become ever, ever more powerful and that we also now get uh, more connected to the Internet of Things and uh, other new developments. Complexity, everything is getting more and more complex. Yeah? So, of course, complexity makes it more difficult to, uh, to maneuver a business where, where all the parameters are changing and where also there are increasingly new parameters. Risks, we have more risks, higher risks, new risks yeah, that we need to uh, deal with. And last but not least, surprises. Yeah? Surprises can be good, yeah? but surprises can be negative. So, everything which could for example, going on now in Europe with this refugee crisis is a surprise uh, for, that maybe half a year ago nobody would have predicted that there's such a huge <laughs> influx of, of refugees. Yeah? And uh, uh, if we summarize this, we can say we're living in a highly dynamic environment uh, in the early 21st century. There will be lots of disruptions. There will be lots of new technologies which are predicted to, to somehow shake up the business as we know it, particularly maybe things like 3D printing, also the Internet of Things. Yeah? And uh, as such, uh, I agree with uh, John Nixley, the famous futurist, who said already in a book uh, roughly yeah, five years ago, we are shifting from a managerial society to an entrepreneurial society. So in the future, it will not be alone about big business yeah? uh, and uh, somehow being, being run and led by, by senior executives and, and managers, but we will see more entrepreneurs coming up. Yeah? And of course, center of entrepreneurship, I think, uh, is, is betting on the same uh, development. And many people agree, or most, most business thinkers agree, that uh, you will see more and more businesses, new businesses, new ventures coming up in the next years. Of course, this is also something which we are likely to see in Thailand. And uh, where we also then really want to, to see more uh, meaningful growth in Thailand in the, uh, in the uh, entrepreneurial sector. And that's something which is probably our case. Yeah? How can we find ways to develop entrepreneurship in Thailand in the next, maybe in the next decade and ride this trend? So let's use this case and start with exploration. We always need to start exploring what is going on. And uh, typically, we, in the exploration stage, we take the role of an explorer and do three things. We express our perceived understanding of this issue, uh, what we know about it, what we don't know about it. We then 
start to take a lot of time yeah, to explore this issue. And again, uh, you do this normally in a video project for at least two days. Yeah? Sometimes you do it for, for weeks and you have uh, some immersion phase where people do, uh, do research, uh, market research, or make field trips and so on. And uh, last but not least, you extract your learnings, uh, what you have learned. And let's say in, in this case, we could have said that we define our challenge as follows. Yeah? How to create a supportive ecosystem to empower creative entrepreneurship and startups in Thailand. And whenever you do ideation, you need such a sentence that starts with the words, how to, how to. And it's, a, it's an action question. You may ask the question, why do we want to formulate this as a question? The answer is, it makes it easy to come up with ideas if we formulate it as a question. If I just make a statement, it's very difficult to come up with ideas. I'll give you an example. What if we could already go out, uh, what if this talk were already over? So how, uh, how to deal with it, how to, oh, sorry, I, I just, uh, I used this question later on for another uh, example, uh, but some of the, the how-to part is really, really important. Yeah? For example, how to deal with people who are late. Now, yeah, there are some people who are late, and we expect the 27 uh, guests, yeah? We could say, we make them, say again? Give them a fine. Make them sing a song. Yeah? Let them dance in front of the, uh, of the classroom, and so on. Yeah? So if we formulate it as a how-to question, it's very easy to come up with ideas. Yeah? If I say, there are some people who are late, you would say, so what? So what am I going to do with this now? Yeah? So and again, that's why it's so important that we formulate a how-to sentence that we use for ideation. And in a, in a real project, we would really spend a lot of time to also make this sentence really crisp and make it very, very useful, very, very, uh, make it easy for people to come up with ideas. And if I look at this sentence, I would say it's good, but whoops, it could be a bit better. Yeah. It's, it's still a bit too clumsy. If we could make it a little bit shorter, we could say how to empower creative entrepreneurship and startups in Thailand. And then we say, again, coming back to our discussion about creative, how to empower creative startups in Thailand. We don't want to have another startup that is another coffee shop, or another restaurant, or another Facebook online store. But we really want to promote creative new ventures. That means they need to come up with some value propositions that are new, uh, that are original, not me too, uh, and that are also meaningful to the market. Uh, that's what we want to arrive at. Good, so that's basically, in this case, our challenge. And now we move with this challenge into the ideation stage. So as soon as we have a case and we have then a final challenge, we can start doing ideation. Otherwise, we, we can't really do it. So in the ideation stage, at every stage at Excel here, I'll, I'll just explain this for the ideation stage, we have a role that we ask people to, to, uh, to step into to make it easy to do this kind of thinking required at this point of time. We have some things that we do and we want to have some outputs. So in the ideation stage, we suggest that everybody becomes a child. Easy. Easy. Think back when you were young, when you were a child. Were you creative? Did you have a lot of ideas? Did you sometimes also have wild ideas? Did you have a rich imagination? The answer is yes. Yeah. And also, one reason why we do this is sometimes uh, in Asia is always a problem that people don't want to lose face. So, if you think a wild idea, you should suggest it. But people might be afraid that they lose face. But, now it's not you who is suggesting the idea, it's you playing in the role of a child. So it's not you, so that's something like a safety framework and we, we have really found that people then start to open up and really feel comfortable also to suggest maybe ideas that otherwise they wouldn't suggest. And that's really an issue uh, 
which we, which we need to consider. So what do we do at the ideation stage? Essentially, we play for ideas. And uh, if we do real ideation sessions, we, this may look like this, or this, or you see here, we, we always often use posters. And uh, if Zuma is here already, good, great. And we have some posters, uh, should be enough so we can start to, to uh, share them with uh, everybody. And uh, so we, we essentially use different techniques to come up with ideas. Now, when we play for ideas, it's very, very important that we follow some ground rules for ideations. Most of the time, people do brainstorming or do ideation, and they don't know about these ground rules huh, of how you actually should do it. And the most important ground rule is this one. Number one, no killing of ideas. No judgment. We defer judgment until we are later on in stage E, evaluation. Yeah. And now we are in stage I, which is a creative state. So we do not judge. We do not kill any idea. Very, very important. And this, of course, applies to an idea that somebody else suggests. Yeah, so I don't, if you suggest an idea, I don't say, wow, that's stupid. Yeah. Or we tried it before. Or it won't work. So we, that's judgment, we don't do this, yeah? But the biggest idea killer is this little voice in your head that says, oh no, this is too crazy. Don't take this idea, don't write this down. So if you hear this little voice coming up, what do you do? You say, shut up, exactly, shut up, and you write down this idea, yeah? And that's what we are supposed to do. Yeah? So the, the idea killer in our head is really our biggest enemy here in the ideation stage. Yeah? Now, ground rule number two is go for quantity. Why? Chan quantity breeds quality. The chances that you come up with at least one really good, interesting, original idea is higher the more ideas you have. Yeah? So if you have produced a thousand ideas, yeah, as compared to having only a hundred, you are more likely to get some really, really original ideas. Ground rule number three, the wilder the better. Shoot for wild, silly, semi, off the wall ideas. Yeah. And many times people don't do this yeah, because either they are afraid of losing face yeah, or also in many processes, many other process methods, they don't have a second creative stage, which means uh, they cannot do it. They, they all immediately think, yeah, but it needs to be realistic. Yeah. So that's why, again, we have the development stage. Yeah, we can be wild in the ideation stage, knowing that we have another creative stage where we design meaningful idea concepts. Last but not least, combine and improve on ideas. Yeah, that's particularly taking care if we collaborate, if we work in a team. Yeah, so you may uh, see one idea here from one person, another idea, and you say, hey, actually, this could be something we could combine into a third idea. Yeah. Or, you maybe read an idea from somebody else, or you, somebody else suggests an idea, and you say, yes, exactly, and we could also do this, and you, you improve on it, you piggyback on this idea, and you come up with another one. So, most important ground rule, of course, is this one. No killing of ideas, and that's something which many people get wrong. And so we, that's for that reason we also push people for quantity. We also said that real projects an idea quota. And then also we, of course, cannot have wild ideas if we judge. Yeah? So if we judge, then we immediately kill the wild ideas. That's what we kill at first. So when we play for ideas, we follow these four ground rules, particularly ground rule number one. And then we can get outputs. Yeah? in the ideation stage, which are ideas. And many times, we write these ideas on post-its. We also later on have some post-its which we will use yeah, for some uh, uh, activities. Yeah. And again, let's say just to give you a number, in a real project, uh, the number of ideas, uh, uh, so a group of 10 people may come up with uh, roughly 800 to 1,000 raw ideas within uh, three and a half hours of, of ideation. If you, if you do it right. Now, what is also important is before we can start doing some ideation, which we want to do, I also need to tell you something important 
which is the difference between associations and ideas. Because many times people write down something and they think it's an idea and it's actually only a simple thought or association. For example, this one. You know. Banana! Or skin. What is wrong with this? Are these ideas? The answer is no. Because they are just, you could say, exclamations. An idea needs to have a full sentence. Yeah? Do something! Yeah? Because we also need to take action on the idea. Yeah? Like create a banana ice cream for kids. Or package the ice cream like a banana skin that kids can peel off. Or create fruit ice cream for kids sold in fruit-like packages, but mix up the shapes and tastes to make it more fun. For example, strawberry ice cream in a banana package. Yeah? And again, all of these things here on these posters are real ideas because they are a sentence, they will do something, yeah? uh, and there are some words uh, which, which are easy to use, create, design, launch, uh, promote, and so on, which you can use quite often. So ideas also, if you look at these three ideas, which one is the most interesting? Which one do you like most? Package. Package. This one, yeah? This one. So people typically say this one or this one, yeah? And generally, as a rule of thumb, the more words you have, often the more interesting an idea gets, yeah? Which means if you have maybe a, a three word idea with a word, it's an idea, but it doesn't really has a lot of depth. So when we do ideation, we really should take the time to formulate our idea out, because otherwise later on we may not really be able to, to use it. Many times people say, yeah, I have more in my head, yeah. write it down. Yeah. What happens if you, if you have an idea and you don't write it down? You forget the details, and sometimes you forget the idea completely. So we should really make, take the time to, to write things down. Good. Which means we come back to our um, practice case. How to empower creative entrepreneurship and startups in Thailand. And what I would want to do is, um, I would want to, to split you up into two groups. However you do this, and one group, I want to work on a technique which is uh, known as morphological matrix and how this works, I explain to you in a moment. Yeah? And another group, I want you to do some pool brain writing, which is another special technique. Yeah? And uh, so let's split ourselves up into two, yeah? two, two groups. Yeah? Uh, however we do this, maybe this half of the room goes here. Yeah? And the other group, half of the room, uh, you go, uh, how can I, should we go outside or, yeah, actually not so many people, we could do it inside. Let's do it, let's stay inside, I think it's, it's easier. Right? So, what I, good, so what I do is, I'll first explain this technique to, uh, uh, Team number one, yeah. and then you can start working on this, and we roughly do this for, for 15 minutes, yeah. and then I explain to you what you are going to do, and with you we do some variation in between, so you do first for for uh, eight minutes, use one tool, and then later on we, we do a, a variation or add an additional twist to this. Yeah. So, may I invite the people to, uh, who are working on this technique, morphological matrix, to come uh, not yet, we'll just keep it for the time being. And some of our challenges how to empower creative startups in Thailand. And we have here the, the starting point of a morphological matrix. A morphological matrix is a very structured way to do ideation, it's one uh, uh, we are very old and famous tools, 
And uh, that's something where we basically create a, a matrix, a table, with, in this case, five columns, with things that relate to our challenge, how to empower creative entrepreneurship in Asia, in Thailand. And what, we, what I want you to do first, for five minutes, maybe five to six minutes, add additional things to this matrix. So for example, we have here one column, entrepreneurship. What are things related to entrepreneurship? We have concepts like opportunity, business idea, business plan, investment problem, yeah? business model, and so on, yeah? so list more. Communication, yeah? events and, and media. Yeah? For example, doing a conference or competition or networking event, party, but also awards like website apps and so on. Yeah? So these are uh, communication events or channels. Yeah? We have entrepreneurial actions that people who start a startup somehow have to do, yeah? things they have to do. We need to get funded, we need to build a quality, we need to do planning, yeah? we need to hire staff, we need to develop product. Empowerment mechanisms. How can we empower creative startups? We have subsidies, tax breaks, mentorship, startup sector. What else? List some more. Last but not least, wild card. Wild card are things that are either wild or that you say, I don't know where to write this, I just write it out here. For example, wild things is do it for free or do it at unusual times, do it at unusual places and so on. So your first job is get some more pens, yeah? and not only one person should write. How can we know? How can we introduce personal games or other problems? For other problems, uh, get something where you need to think about. Uh, so you should always have five columns, yeah? and then you should think about what what are areas, what are dimensions that are related, what are categories that are related to this uh, challenge. Yeah? So and uh, then basically the the columns they always change with each project. So this, this is not, uh, somehow if we would work on, uh, let's say, on a new product development project, we would do different, very different colors. So we, we might have, for example, materials, we might have shapes, uh, we might have functions, and so on. And so that, that always changes with the project. Wild card is always there. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. The wild card adds some, some wild elements. Yeah? For example, you, you could have some of the product that it bounces. Yeah? or some other things. So that, that's really something which can add some, some spice. So again, what I want you to do, somehow get some more pens. And I, we have a few pens also on the table. And then just add additional elements to this uh, matrix. What we do later on, once we have, we say we have a lot of ammunition, we then get the posters and we step back and we think about how could we combine these uh, things into ideas on how to empower creative startups in Thailand. For example, we have here a uh, networking event and investment round. We could make uh, networking events to basically match companies who need new investments with uh, potential investors. One idea. Yeah. So you always combine two or three elements with each other. But before we can do this, we first need to fill this market. Okay. You can also have six. Yeah. Six. Uh, some of, just. I uh, just keep it. Uh, we don't have so much time yeah, today, so that's why, from a, from a from an economic point of view, you should have at least five. Yeah. If you have six and have time, make six or make seven. That's even even better. But if you have too many, it gets too too difficult. To some of the some of, from a very peripheral vision point of view, we, we can take in a certain amount of information, and otherwise getting too wide. Yeah. Make sense? Good. Okay, so you guys can start, and uh, I go to the next group. And Sama, may I invite you to? No, so you can you can stay here, and uh, maybe one of you can come here, and two of you can come here, and we are doing pool brain writing, which is a very special way of. You could say it's a different way to do. Okay, good. Okay, good. It's another way to do brainstorming. Yeah? So brainstorming, many people think it's a, it's a super technique, but research studies have found that brainstorming actually is inferior with regards to achieving the main objective 
of ideation, which is to get a lot of ideas. And one thing that you can do is to preserve the benefits of brainstorming, but to get many more ideas is to do full brain writing. So how, do, how does this work? We uh, use these sheets to write down ideas for our challenge, how to empower creative startups in Thailand. So you write down one idea here, another idea here, your third idea here, and then you have completed one row. Now you swap the sheet with another person, which means you put it into the pool. Yeah. And then you get another sheet. Yeah. So you can read the ideas that other people have read. Yeah. Maybe you get another idea, maybe not. If not, you just write down three more ideas yeah, for our challenge. Yeah. Then again, you, you swap. Yeah. And you do this for maybe seven minutes. And then after seven minutes, I, I make a, a slight twist. And I give you uh, different instructions. Yeah. So what you should do is, you should maybe you could come here. Yeah. And then you, you guys, you can write here, but then change the sheets here. here yeah? So all of you get one sheet. And the others we put into the middle. So we have many copies because we were expecting more people. And you never know with this and uh, how many people is there. <laughs> they, they don't, yeah, they're not in the sequence. They also don't need to relate to each other. Just three ideas. Yeah? Always write down three ideas on how to empower creative startups in Thailand. Yeah? And then, we do this for eight minutes. After eight minutes, I, I uh, give you slightly different instructions and we make it a bit more fun yeah? because uh, this one is now basically helping us to get some all the ideas that you might have already out in your mind to get them out. Okay, any question? <laughs> creative startups in Thailand, how to empower creative startups in Thailand. So we could do this, we could do that, we could do that. Change your suit. Okay. Good. Okay, so I play some. You need a pencil. Yeah, that's very. Okay. Could you share one? Yeah. Anybody? Good. And I'll play some music. So the time seven twenty two. Can 
also be in both. Yeah? So that, uh, that, that's a, that's a, sometimes it's a, it's not a, it's a quite disjunctive. So. Yeah. So now we do some uh, ideation. Huh? 